So I just got done with an emergency job for a customer. I wanted to show you. No, he took it with him. It was an emergency job. So I don't have it to show. But here's what it is, and I've done lots of these over the years. You have pumps. They call them a line shaft pump, where there's a line, a whole bunch of shafts going together that go down into a well. It's a The pump is way down at the bottom, and all of these pieces of shaft in between will have bushings. Sometimes there'll be um, all kinds of different material. The, the most common is bronze. And because of the flow of water, there's pipe on the outside of this. And because of the water flowing over this, it lubricates those bushings. They're just water lubricated bushings. Sometimes they'll use plastic. Some have some rubber. But they stabilize all these pieces of shaft. And they'll be anywhere from some of my work on are 20 foot deep. Uh, this one, I don't know what the total depth wa was. I had to make the top shaft three and a half inches longer for them. And uh, I've worked on ones that were a couple hundred feet deep. So, and what they'll do, each of these sections of shaft has a left hand thread on it. And this will have a left hand thread. See, we're standing in front of the bulletin board, so that's why I can use the little dry erase markers. Otherwise, we'd have a different background. So, we have a left handed thread on here. Darn it, that's right-handed. There, left-handed thread. It goes that way. Okay, so we have a left-handed thread on there, and we have a <clears throat> left-handed thread on here. Yeah, okay. So we both sides, and what you do is when these thread up, there's a coupler, and the coupler is threaded all the way through. If you have to make the coupler, you want to make it in one piece. There's no... There's a... They drill a little hole in the side of the coupler, and you'll recognize this once you see it. If you've, you've seen these before, this is some information on them. But if you haven't seen them, think about it when you do, when a customer brings one in. These are used by utilities, uh, power plants. You'll see them in sewage treatment plants, big mines. Um, really pretty common pumps. And the motor is vertical and runs at the top. The motor also will have a backstop on it. It'll have a ratcheting backstop so it can only turn one way. So that you don't accidentally turn it the wrong way is one reason. The other one is so that the load on the water, if it stops, doesn't rotate the motor after it stops. Uh, so you always want to keep the rotation the correct way. Darn it, I did. I thought I did that one wrong. That was right-handed. There, left-handed. Okay, the other one. other one was right. I do better on lathe. Um, so we have both sides threaded. You have your coupling in between. It's one set of threads in the coupling. And then they drill a hole usually at the side of it about halfway down. And that's so that if there's any oil, grease, whatever, it keeps, it will allow them to seat up all the way. You don't have a hydraulic lock in there. Now, here is what's key for the machinist, more so than the fact you have left-hand threads. Usually, you're cutting an undercut to start your threads so that it can go on all the way. And the depth of the, the length of the thread is somewhat important. So, again... That hole that's drilled in the side, it doesn't have to end up exactly at the, end, the uh, mating of them, but it needs to come somewhere close, and you want most of the threads in both. So the th length of the thread does matter. You don't want to make the thread too long. But here's the really big key, and that is what you do. Normally, they'll be center drilled, but not always. But the center of it here is generally clearanced lower. It will be counterboard a little bit. So you have a little bit of a counterboard is a common way this is done and you'll center drill it. So you do that with it up in your chuck and then you extend this out a ways, put it in a center and then you come in here and this first part that you didn't hit, you reface it because that's the part that the two shafts actually hit together. The middle is just sunk down enough so that it doesn't hit in between the two shafts and you do this part. Now, the reason you do that with this sticking out a ways, it doesn't have to be many feet out, but a couple of foot works real good. Um, depending on the, the length of the shaft, how much whip you've got on it, you know, decide on your situation what's best for your machine. But the other way, a lot of people do this, usually you get by with it, but it doesn't always, is they will just chuck it up right on the end and just face it and then uh, face it and thread it. Well, you've got it running true because you dial it in here but you're depending on your chuck jaw condition and the, 
the way it chucks up as far as how straight this is. And so that can end up with this being just the slightest bit and even a couple thousandths crooked on this surface can make quite a vibration on these. So instead, if you come in here, like you say, you put a little bit of a counter bore in the center so it's down low, put a center drill in there, sneak it out, give it some distance. Now, if you're off here, you're gonna be off almost nothing out there if you were out by one thousandths on dialing it in two foot away. And this center here is, in tr is true here, so you get a face that's true with the center line of the shafting. And usually you use a, a uh, ground shaft, so it's a precision shaft, but I have seen some where they just use cold rolled. And uh, depending on how accurate your cold rolled is and how much of a hurry you're in, sometimes that works. It also makes a difference whether you're making the bushings to match it. And then at the top, so on the other end, this would be a normal coupling length shaft. But let's say that this one here is uh, yeah, left-handed threads. Let's say that this is not a coupling shaft. Let's say that this is a top shaft. Top shaft, we would have bunches of extra threads, and then we'd have a key that comes down through here. And the way this works is this goes through your top motor. So you have all of these shafts that were put together, and then your motor on the top has a nut here, and this key is engaged in a hub on the top of the motor that drives it. And so you pull this up, the motor has really large thrust bearings. It's specifically made for this type of a pump. And so you, you suck this up, and then when you get it where you want it for your impeller clearance, then you go ahead and the nut will have some bolts and you bolt it in so it doesn't turn anymore and the key drives it. And as far as that goes too, most of these what you'll do is you'll have them all the way down. And you'll, when they're, after they're setting down, you'll bring them up to where there's a certain uh, tension on it. You're going to figure that a little bit with the length of the shafting and things so you know that you're lifting the, sh the actual at the bottom of it, you're lifting the impeller, and then you're going to come up a given amount. Uh, the ones I've worked on, most of them, 3 16 was a pretty common amount that you would come up. But then that also depends on the particular pump. If it was an in-seal pump where the uh, end of the impeller is sealing, you'd want to probably come closer to a 16th inch back. What I'm used to are ones where you've got wear rings that do the main sealing and you're just making sure that you're somewhere up in the wear ring and not hitting anything. So the 3 sixteenths giving you a little bit more clearance off of the bottom of the casting. Anyway, um, had to make some in a hurry. And we made some happy customers by being able to find a piece of shaft at another shop and running out and getting it and charging them overtime rate, uh, including driving to get the shaft and coming back. And at the end of the day, they got their part, and since they really, really needed it, they didn't let me keep it for you. So I had to draw on this old piece of surplus 304. Line shafts for pumps. The really cool ones are the Goulds with the taper lock, but that's another story.